Hello once again, my dear friends. Welcome to the Mario Cristobal Show. Joe Zagacki with Don Bailey Jr. This week, the University of Miami on the road against Texas A&M, a 9 o'clock kickoff from Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. But Don, the Hurricanes are coming off a nice victory against Southern Miss. That they are, Joe. Mission accomplished by the Miami defense, holding Frank Gore Jr. to 10 total yards rushing. Very successful day there. They also had three more takeaways to go to the, on their list of, that gets them to the six right now at this point of the season. One of the big keys in the game, the second half, Miami's defense got off the field. They held Southern Miss to one for six on third downs. Yeah, they were excellent. The adjustments that were made by Coach Steele in the locker room at halftime, they came out, they implemented them, and it worked. Big play was a backbreaker. Keyshawn Smith off of Flea Flicker. We love that. Love calling it. Love seeing it. And what a perfectly thrown ball by Tyler Van Dyke. We're going to talk to Coach Cristobal about Texas A&M. They're coming off a loss to App State. Nonetheless, this was a top five team at the beginning of the year. They have a ton of talent. Yeah, a, a week ago we were talking about Texas A&M being in the college football playoffs. So this is a quality team that's recruited extremely well over the last four years under Coach Fisher, and Miami is going to walk into as hostile a environment as there is in all of college football. Coach Cristobal joins us next on the Mario Cristobal Show. Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mario Cristobal Show. University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal, Don Bailey Jr., Joe Zagacki along here for the ride. Hurricanes, a winner on Saturday, scored 27 straight points against Southern Miss in the second half, held Southern Miss to one for six on third down conversions and 24 total rushing yards. Coach, congratulations on a nice victory and domination in the second half. Took us a little while to get going, sluggish start but found a way towards the end of the first half to start putting some things together and grab some momentum before heading into the locker room with the touchdown drive, an 86-yard drive. Defense came out, uh, came out strong, played Miami Hurricane football right away to start the second half, and that allowed us to grab the momentum and take over from there. Coach, you have said it a couple times since you've been here, since the season, you can't let a win feel like a loss. And there's always something to work on, but there's a lot to celebrate in what happened on Saturday. 100%. I think all coaches have made that mistake at some point in time mm -hmm. or another where you know you could have done things better. But uh, when you win a game um, and you win a game that, that with the score that it was, there's plenty to fix, and you know that. But you certainly don't want to take away from the fact that there was a lot of work invested in there and that you did win the game and you can learn some of those lessons without suffering some the consequences of a loss. So that's important as well, and our team is all about that. They understand it, and they knew. They knew when we got back, we were going to get back to it. We were going to get after it. But we always shine a, a realistic light on the situation as opposed to trying to sugar it up or paint it down the other way as well. And I think that method works with our, our players. I thought one of the other positives out of this was they gave you a whole bunch of different stuff, especially on offense. We're all geared up for Frank Gore Jr. Meanwhile, here comes a, uh, a freshman quarterback, and – kind of didn't feature Frank as much and showed a lot, bunch of different looks on defense, so probably put you in the adjustment mode early on. Well, they did a very smart thing. Early in the week, they announced that they were going to run, you know, three or four different kinds of offenses, which makes you, you know, it spreads you out pretty thin in terms of your preparation. But the most important part about that aspect of the game was that our defensive line um, progressed and improved in terms of the way that we had better control of the line of scrimmage, uh, created some more knockback and allowed our linebackers to run a little bit more freely and make some tackles and be more effective tackling when those spaces to make tackles in are tighter when they're smaller. So all in all, it's some very encouraging stuff there and lots to work on. But no team is great unless it's led by its players. And Tyler Van Dyke said something in the post game, and he says that he wasn't happy with his performance, but he's going back to the facility to fix it now. Mm -hmm. After a football game and 100 five degrees, his mind was, is it he's going to go get better right now before the day ends. That's very impressive coming out of any player. It is, and it's what you need mm -hmm. to be an elite football team, and you want that to be contagious, infectious, really permeate the entire locker room, where it's got to it's gotta be that important. You know, it's always got to mean more to us than it does to the other team, and when you have your quarterback and your leader um, display that in his actions and truly carry, you know, follow through on doing so, it carries a lot of weight. It's very real, and I think that certainly has had a, a positive impact on our team. Leonard Taylor, Coach Palmetto, Matt Killian in the second half. 
and Palmetto won. <laughs> and that seemed to uh, really ignite everybody. Uh, after the play, I looked over at the sideline, everybody's jumping up and down, and then he did it again. So that was good to see. No, without a doubt, that sequence of plays right there just... Uh, it jump-started the sideline, um, it's really everybody for that matter, and led to, again, some more points, right? A stop, a punt, and then all of a sudden a big play. So, you know, tremendous, uh, tremendous plays right there by Leonard. And, again, the more we push and the more we grind with him, the better he gets. So we're expecting him to even get better this week. Zion Nelson got some quality reps yeah. on both tackles. He did. It's great to see him back out there knocking off the rust a little bit. You know how it is. First game back, all of a sudden it's live action. And after a pretty good, you know, I would say, what, five or six weeks of inaction, you know, that's, that's tough when all of a sudden it's live and you're going against a team that runs all those stunts and pressures. I mean, when those lines start switching sides and they get replaced by others on the second level and sometimes the third level, you've got to react, got to drop your hips and go. And, uh, and Zion did a really nice job. And I know he's going to, you know, be excited to play even more and get ready to get back into his form. And you were able to run the football. Henry Parrish again had 100 yards in the first game, flirted with 100 yards in this game, but continues to, to, to run really hard. He's a hard runner. He's a tough guy, uh, a lot of pride in what he does, and he's coach hard. You know, Coach Smith does not pull any punches. You know, he understands that, you know, he's played the position, right? And if you watch the way, you know, Kevin Smith ran in high school and in college and professionally, you, you would understand that, you know, he's. He's not running back friendly guy, right? He is going to go and he's going to put his head down. He's going to knock people back. And he's very, very meticulous in his preparation and showing these guys the details of how to be a successful running back. And, and not only, you know, Henry, um, but obviously Thad has gotten uh, significantly better as, you know, Rooster now getting a couple of reps, you know, because he was uh, dinged up a little bit. You see a lot of progress in that running back room. And those guys know that for us to be successful, they have to run hard. Quietly, your defense is doing a great job taking away the football. Three takeaways week one, three last week, had an opportunity for a couple more. What's causing that to happen and, and how important is it? Everybody being in sync, communication, lining up correctly and then executing. When we do that, we have a chance to be pretty good and we have progressed in, uh, in those regards, in that aspect. But um, overall, you'll see we, we gave up a couple of chunk plays that we'd like to have back in the day no until we stop those types of plays people are going to keep trying them which we need that um, bottom line is you know football you know football always tells the truth right so make sure that uh, the things that you were good at that you keep getting better at and find your compliments to them and the things that maybe you weren't so good at that you get those things rectified and remedied so they don't show up again they had a couple of very talented wide receivers and we talked about it on your show last week a kid Brownlee, really nice player. Uh, 15, a really nice player. James Williams defensively picking up what Don said, showed some really good range. And Tyreek's interception was very nice as well. It was. Those two guys are big, physical guys, long and rangy guys as well. And um, they had a great feel. They, they, put in, they put in some time and in preparation, and it showed up on game day, uh, both of them making some really, really big plays and certainly changing and taking the momentum away from their side. Called runs, Coach, you've been outstanding, really, at. I mean, you held uh, Frank Gore Jr. to 10 or 12 yards in the ball game, but overall, two ball games, you're less than two yards a carry and what you're giving up on called runs. Pretty impressive number. Getting better, you know, and there's, a, again, there's a lot of meat on the bone left. There's a lot of times where technically and fundamentally, we can be and need to be better. So we're encouraged, you know, that we are improving. And that certainly was a huge aspect coming into the season was defending the run better and playing better overall as a defense and tackling better. So we are seeing the right steps. We are seeing progress, but there is a, there's certainly a bunch to work on that we're excited about. It's not one of those, oh man, we got to work. It's one of these, man, we've got another chunk right here we could take if we do this right. We've got another piece, another aspect here we can get better at if we just get our pads down, if we just read this correctly, if we just shoot our hands and get them inside and provide more knockback. So. Uh, for us to achieve our goals, we just got to keep getting better. Uh, I would also say, well, when you guys played, you, you guys um, had young players come in and play, had an opportunity to play, whether the game was in hand or you played in games where uh, the depth was able to be developed. And in this game, you were able to get, uh, in critical times, uh, Wesley Bassaint got in there, Nigel e. Kelly got in there, Malik Curtis got in there. And there wasn't mop-up time. These guys got some important, valuable minutes and probably some others, and S. Cooper, uh, got in there. So some of the guys that will help you with depth 
are getting some really good playing time. Yeah, and they've earned it. Mm -hmm. You know, over here, it's a, you know, we, we're all about playing guys that have earned playing time. And that means that when the game is actually underway, it's no longer experiment time, trying to find out who can do it. These are guys that have proven themselves in practice and that can be trusted to execute at a very high level. So those are guys that were thrown in there in critical situations and for the most part perform really well. Coach, special teams is always big, but especially on the road, I'm sure Borregales and Lou are going to have something to do with the outcome come this week against Texas A&M. But Borregales, three for three, and Lou mid-40s as far as an average go, pretty good day for those guys. Yeah, those guys are unbelievable as, uh, as human beings, as leaders, as teammates. Um, Hard to find better, a better crew of guys, and they're performing at a high level. Five of seven of um, of Andy's kicks were in the end zone touchbacks. The other two, you know, he's, he'd like to have those back. Three for three, like you mentioned, perfect on his on his uh, extra points and the trajectory of his ball. You know, makes it really, really hard to mess with. And then Lou, Lou's very versatile. You know, he put it on tape. You know, one time he rolled out, another time he went right up the middle and kicked it left. I mean, he's, he can do a lot of things now. And he's a very talented guy. He's taking complete ownership of the punt unit, making sure that those guys really dig deep and understanding all the different looks that we're going to be seeing to the different schemes and alignments that we have to make sure that we always are on point on that punt team. I should sneak in here that the next home game, Middle Tennessee State, will be a 3.30 kickoff uh, for our fans, but this past game was a 12 o'clock kickoff. It was smoking hot. Your team, I thought, looked good, you know, well-conditioned and all that stuff. Tough conditions. They look tough. Fan base had to be tough in that one, too, because it was a smoking hot, radiant, sunny day. They did. I appreciate the people that were out there, you know, especially the ones that stayed in the sun the entire time. And we need those guys, you know, everybody out there. They, um, the team, we had one guy that needed an IV, but no one cramped, which is very telling. It means that you've had a really, really good summer and that you're hydrating well, that your nutrition is taken very seriously, and that you can truly use the elements to your advantage, right? If you train in this weather, you should be able to use it to your advantage. And our guys are taking a lot of pride in that. You know, we really, um, you know, that part of it was very uh, encouraging for us, and we want to continue building on that. Coach Akeem Mesidor shined week one against mm -hmm. Bethune, was out last week against Southern Miss. What's his status, and how was he last night? Yeah, looking good. You know, yesterday he practiced a little bit, and we expect him to be full go tomorrow, which is, the, for us, Tuesday and Wednesday are those hard hat days, right? Pack a lunch, because we're going and we expect him to be a, a full speed player by tomorrow. Up next for the University of Miami, the Aggies of Texas A&M. The Canes go on the road, a nine o'clock kickoff. We'll talk about Texas A&M coming up next. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. Next up is Texas A&M, the Hurricanes on the road, Kyle Field, taking on the Aggies of Texas A&M. They're coming off a tough loss to App State. Nonetheless, Coach, this is a very, very talented team. Coach Fisher's been there, I believe, five years now, been able to stockpile his talent, over 100,000 fans. This is going to be a very big challenge. Without a doubt, they uh, tremendous opportunity. You know, that's how we see it. They are, are as talented as any team you'll see in the entire country, as explosive, as strong, as thick, and powerful at the line of scrimmage, as you'll see as well. Um, they're a team that plays at a really, really high level. I know they were disappointed with the outcome of this past week, but we also know the reality that's the same team that last year beat Alabama when Alabama was number one, and they're more talented this year than they were last year even. So an explosive football team that our guys are really excited and preparing for, um, jumping around to meetings this morning, which they held on their own, and uh, again, getting ready for a tremendous test, a tremendous challenge, and a tremendous opportunity this Saturday. Could you talk about speed and explosiveness? They're number six, the kickoff returner. He had a 90 plus yard for, for points, and then also plays the running back position. You always have to know where he's at on the field. Well, it's not only that he's fast, this guy's powerful. This is not a little guy. This is a guy that, you know, he's got great knee drive, and he plays, you know, he gets behind his pads plays with low center of gravity, so he runs through guys. Look at it on the kickoff return. Mm -hmm. You know, he's wrapped up and tackled. 
not so fast, he's gone, you know. And when uh, he's a guy that just, he diffuses all angles. You know, once he gets an opportunity to break one, he typically goes. So very dangerous player, you know, catches the ball well out of the backfield as well, good blocker. And he's complemented by a, a big, explosive, powerful offensive line with, uh, with some tight ends that are really good blockers and really good receivers as well. So they give you a multitude of formations and, and personnel usage. So um, overall, just a, a really impressive team. Haynes King has been their starting quarterback. He was the number three dual threat quarterback. You probably already know this coming out of high school. <laughs> you probably recruited him. Yes. And uh, very good player. Yes. Struggled a little bit, but uh, he can run, and they are really trying to use their speed on the outside. It looks like getting the ball down the field. He's an excellent player. I recruited him hard out of high school and know a lot about him, but uh, an excellent quarterback and uh, a guy that when they are on point, they play at a really, really high level. So for our defense, our defense has to play at their very best. Eye discipline, communication, alignments, assignments, playing fast, and we got to be on point. Coach, their defensive line mm -hmm. is as big a bodied bunch as I've seen uh, in a long time. I mean, they are, and they all move well, they're mm -hmm. powerful, and mm -hmm. they're going to be something to contend with. No doubt, tremendous, not, I call it, I don't think it's a word, knock you back ability is what it's they have. Yeah, it's, it's an old line of word, probably, you know, just really thick and explosive and powerful. So, um, their strength and condition department obviously does a really, really good job. Keep those guys big and lean and strong, and they, you know, they've, they're well conditioned now. Yeah. And they're deep into the game and play 70 and 80, and they're still going. They're going hard. They're going strong, and and they play a good number of guys. So they have depth. They rotate really well, and they're all a little bit different in their own way. So you really got to do a lot of film study to get uh, a really good idea of how they play their blocks right, how they rush the passer, you know, how they use their hands, all those things. Impressive bunch. The guy looks to maybe be the glue in the back, Demario Richardson, one of their safeties. He's been there for a long time, surrounded by guys that are all veterans, a couple of freshmen mixed in there, but it seems like they're linked together pretty well. They're linked together really well. They communicate really well. They're very disciplined. They've got great eye discipline, great technique, and they all could run and cover. And then they're complemented by a great D-line, yeah. right? So they make it hard, right? You, don't, you can't hang on the ball very long. Um, and their linebackers, I tell you, those guys, those guys are impressive players now. They get downhill in a hurry and they knock people back. Again, just a very impressive bunch and looking forward to playing. Coach, you have to practice dealing with noise. I mean, you're going to face that over 100 plus uh, thousand people and they're going to be screaming and hollering and you really have to embrace it, but you also have to work it into preparation. You do. You know, you, uh, if you're not prepared for it, that's when you should worry about it. You know, if all of a sudden you're going to start practicing a certain way and trying to invent stuff at the last second, it's like anything else, right? If when you prepare the right way, you should walk into a place with confidence that you're going to perform to the highest of your capability, the best of your capability. So uh, we, we totally understand the environment, the atmosphere, and for us, it's, it's an exciting opportunity. We understand the challenges that come with it, so you prepare for those challenges. Must help. I think it's going to help uh, the University of Miami. You, you've been in that, and it's a Southeastern Conference team, right? And uh, you probably look across the field and say, well, I, that looks familiar to me in terms of size and strength. It is. It, they've, they've built a tremendous roster. That's a really good football team. Really, really good. And uh, when you complement it with an environment like that, it's, yeah. it's why you play college football. It's why you come to Miami, right? You want to be on, on the big stage, in the big games. Um, but you also, when we approach this kind of stuff, it's, you could be in the, the parking lot of the Walmart, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, it's all about your focus on what you have to do, how you have to do it, why we're doing it that way, and doing it to the best of your ability, okay? And that's our complete other focus, making sure the Miami Hurricanes are taking care of Miami Hurricane business to make sure we pack what we need to to get on that plane and give ourselves the best chance for success. For as long as we've been coming to this building, a road trip has been called a business trip. Mm -hmm. And that's truly what it is. It is. And you have to cut out everyone and everything that does not help us in achieving our weekly goal, right? That's the way it is. You know, the, uh, this thing goes by fast, right? You're on a plane, you get there, you're having a pregame dinner, you're walking through your meetings, you're waking up, a couple of meetings, walk through, and you're, you're out there, you're playing ball. So every single second, is used up by us. We always talk about you got to work and work and work to the game and then you've got to work through the game as coaches, right? Every single play carries an opportunity to make an assessment, a correction, a tweak, 
to give yourself more success on the next play. Sometimes it's play to play, sometimes it's series to series, sometimes it's at halftime, right? Mm -hmm. But you've, as a coaching staff, you've got to be able to work to the game and not worry about the clock, not worry about the scoreboard, you know, not worry about the noise, none of that stuff. Just worry about everything that's between the lines and snap to whistle, right? And that's how we do it. I think also, I, I would imagine we've given Texas A&M accolades and properly so, they got to be sitting there going, wait a minute, we got Miami coming in here and Miami's got some pretty darn good players also with a coaching staff that's been, been around, guys that know what they're doing, guys that have been in big games, guys that understand what big games are all about. I mean, to me, it's just two great teams having an opportunity to play each other. Um, I don't dive into any of the hype or hoopla surrounding it. It's never been our way. It will never be our way. You know, we've got, again, a tremendous opportunity in front of us, a tremendous challenge, one that we're super excited about. But we're, we're really excited about the preparation part. We know that we have to be at our best, and the utter focus is us being at our best. Coach, how do you get on the plane? How do you get on the plane if you're a member of this squad and you are a part of the travel team? What are the things you have to do to be a part of it? You have to prove that you have the capabilities, uh, the willingness to do whatever it takes to help us have success on Saturday. You know, and it's, it's a little bit of everything now. You know, it's what you do on the practice field. It's what you do in the classroom. It's how you handle yourself off the field. I mean, you know, we, um, look, this is, this is a vocation for us, and it comes with teaching moments. And, but we're, very, we're just very honest and transparent. There's no nonsense. There's no... You know, there's no BS if I could say that on the air. I guess I can, maybe, I don't know. You guys will let me know <laughs> later. Um, but, you know, we are, we get these guys not only ready for games, but for the reality of life when you hang them up, when the reality of a tough job market, right, a, a difficult economy, when those things hit and you got to be a provider and you got to face real world stuff, well, all this should be training later applied to those moments. But, um, and, while you're in these moments, right, every single ounce of what we do is geared towards preparing these guys for their best chance to be successful on every single play on Saturday, you know? And that is, that comes with the reality, you know? We don't shy away from the tough conversations, you know? But for the, one of the greatest forms of respect is to confront and demand when something is not being done to a standard. And that doesn't mean that you have to be a jerk, that you don't have to be, you know what I mean? It just means that you respect someone enough to say, look them in the eye and say, hey, that's not the way we do things around here. We're going to do it like this, and this is what you have to do to make sure that happens. And then work with that person, that young man, to help him get there. That's what it's all about, you know? And we only have so much time with these guys, you know? It's a couple hours a day, and at the end of the day, it's what, three to five years, max. And that's, in athletics, three to five years goes by like that. So we've got to take advantage of every second that we have and make sure that we, uh, we give every single player nothing but our very best. Coach, it should be a gr uh, great one, great opportunity for the University of Miami. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Okay, appreciate you guys. Go Canes. University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal will continue on the show right after this. To have a truly great career, you need to be with a great company. Now's your chance to go be great at AutoNation. Go to jobs.autonation.com for endless career opportunities. Work at America's largest and most admired automotive retailer that's driving towards $35 million donated to fight cancer. For industry-leading benefits and a great work experience, visit jobs.autonation.com now and go be great. We're all button pushers, double tappers, swipers, and now used car buyers. Go to AutoNation.com today. You'll see thousands of one-price pre-owned vehicles online right now. All your favorite makes and models, all quality inspected, all priced to sell with no hassles. Plus, we'll even pay top dollar for your car. Go to the AutoNation store near you or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. AutoNation. Happy to welcome you back to the Mario Cristobal Show. Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr. Miami and Texas A&M, 9 o'clock in front of a packed house. Over 100,000 expected for this game. I'm excited for it. That's why you come play college football. That's why you come to the University of Miami is to, to take the show on the road and show a national audience 
how much Miami has improved. Players want to see how they measure up in this game. Absolutely. They're competitive or they wouldn't be in the game. So I think it's important for everybody to realize that this, to tune in and support your Miami Hurricanes because this is going to be one heck of a ball game. When you go on the road, defense travels and you got to protect the ball. You certainly do. You want to win the giveaway, takeaway category, Joe. But I also think that special teams are going to be a huge part of this as well. Should be a great one. Last time Miami went to Texas A&M was 2008 and the Canes came away with a victory. For head coach Mario Cristobal and Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time on the Mario Cristobal Show.